Oh. Well, and then, okay, and the title card comes up, by the way, at this point to inform us. It says, and I quote, Critics believe that psychics and mediums use dishonest techniques to give sitters accurate readings. And I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean fucking believe? It's not that critics believe that. It's that critics have demonstrated it on live television. Jesus. To which Laura responds, single combat right now. Let's go. Put some contest. Whatever the fuck. I don't know. And then we cut. They don't do a, even a push-up contest. God awful. Movie, movie, movie. Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because if we stopped at this point, the wall would miss our heads. I'm your host, No Illusions, <laughs> and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. Uh, so, I'm getting a number eight. In the third <laughs> eye screen right now. Do you ever use that digit in your life? I have used that number. <laughs> oh, I used that number what? today on un- fucking okay. real. Okay. Nailed it. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm amazing, Noah. We've peaked. We've peaked. It's been <laughs> such a good couple of weeks. Crossroads of Hunter Wild. Rambo Last Blood on the bonus episode. Now we got Marsh to talk about psychics. How much better can it get? <laughs> well, it could it could be so good that you don't step on the next intro. That would be awesome <laughs> as well. Or just let me do the fucking job. But psychic no, that's would have known that that was coming He's... up in the next intro. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck did you know that, Eli? <laughs> we should charge money for this shit. All right. And of course, uh, Eli already spilled the beans, but I'll tell you anyway, sitting 4,100 miles to my east northeast is our special guest masochist. Michael Marshall is the project director for the Good Thinking Society. He's the host of the Be Reasonable podcast, the co-host of Skeptics with a K, and he's an on-again, off-again European marsh. Welcome back, sir. <laughs> oh, it's great to be back. Thank you so much for having me on for the psychic episode. I have a lot of thoughts about Laura Lynn in this show. Oh my God, yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, good. Oh, good. Because that this could have very easily gone the other way, too, you know, Merce. <laughs> this could also have been that straw that broke your back. I have very uh, few thoughts, so this is going to work out great. Yeah, all right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched the Goop Lab Are You Into It? into it and oh, it uh it really peaks right there in the title with that amazing <laughs> um in case anybody's new this is gwyneth paltrow's new netflix show about liars and in this episode we meet a psychic slash medium and a really bad scientist who tries to like you know prove or whatever that you can talk <laughs> with dead people but it's just 30 minutes of guessing wrong. And it's fucking delightful. The oh. psychic is so bad. The batting average is ridiculously low in the show that she's in meant to be impressive and show that psychics are real. The psychic gets maybe one thing correct when somebody's like, wait, uh, when you said the letter L earlier, I thought I thought of something with the letter L. In my <laughs> life. And they had to use an edit to make that happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that we wouldn't watch a psychic name the alphabet and then eventually go back <laughs> to getting hell right. <laughs> the fucking best. And Eli, how bad was this episode? Well, if you loved the movie Ghost, but you were too distracted by Whoopi Goldberg's attractiveness, you will love this episode. It's medium <laughs> rare. <laughs> medium rare. <laughs> And the podcast peaked with that amazing wordplay just now. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. And, and Marsh, how bad was that pun? Um, <laughs> oh, I've got a, so much a worse one later in the episode. I'm so excited. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> He's delighting in it already. I love it. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Best, worst, best, 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 Anna. Anna <laughs> oh, is my fucking favorite. <laughs> she is the Goop staff member who wouldn't lie to help the psychic, but they kept her in the episode anyway, and it's fucking amazing. We get to watch a reading of Anna by this liar, and it's just like, nope, nope, 
<laughs> Neppers. <"Nyah." laughs> this is so fun. What else you got? Nyet nine. Let's do this. This is great. It's amazing. Oh, God. Anna was my hero. What I loved particularly was that she would like ask clarifying questions of the psychic. Yes. Really lock down what the psychic meant. Yes. And then say no. <laughs> <laughs> do you mean a person whose name starts with the letter J? Yeah, no. and she's like, yeah. so you mean so s- someone who is dead, who is like related to my grandma, so my grandma's sister? Yeah, that didn't ha- that didn't exist. No. That wasn't one yeah, of those. No, but- Just, yeah. now, we, now we've clarified. Hold on, did you say J or J adjacent? Because I have a K. <laughs> Still no, I made that up. I don't have a K. <laughs> And connected to that, I want to say the, uh, the this for me is best worst audio editing because the editor of this episode is working overtime. I hope they got paid more than anybody else involved in this because the only way they can make anybody in this show look remotely psychic is if you cut midway through every other fucking sentence. Yep. There's not one sentence you make it to the end of without really hard, sharp cuts. And even then, these people do not appear to have any psychic abilities. Right. With the heaviest amount of like cutting room floor or cherry picking done it still is under impressive even when they're people who know each other right like that's the worst yeah. fucking thing is that at certain points it's just co-workers psychicking each other it's like you've talked to her before you share a break room and you couldn't do better than that wow <laughs> this whole episode is like a like a 90s disc man on your center console of your car and you don't have the skip <laughs> protection and it's just so many bad edits it's the best <laughs> All right, so I was going to go with best worst class assignment. All right, so there's it, it, it the this whole thing is centered around the psychic giving the goop staff a class on how to be as psychic as they can be and as a Patreon reward we should make me and Marsh go to this fucking class. Yeah. Oh, I want to go to this class. I I would pay to fly over to this to that class. Oh god. Yeah. I will pay for you to do that. Although I would insist I'd have a chair. <laughs> Because I don't know why they're all sat cross-legged on the floor. Whether like psychic powers involve your head being within a, a, a close proximity to the ground, maybe that's how it works. Marsh, I don't know, but- I Marsh yes, seriously, I will. I will buy you a giant rolling throne to bring into that class just to be an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> So big, like Game of Thrones, but just like a lifeguard-sized <laughs> chair. <laughs> and, of course, I am going to nominate this episode for best, 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 best magic trick. <laughs> really? Say anything. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything about it now. Okay. But I go to magic conventions. I advise for, like, professional magicians. And this episode contains the best magic trick I have seen in years. <laughs> it's pretty it's, it's fucking pretty good. Great. It's a, yeah, it yeah. really is. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I don't know if there is a single spoken line in this show that I did not write a note about. So we're <laughs> going to need a second to warm up to this one. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the dangerously misguided bullshit of the Goop Lab. Are you into it? No. Is how that would be pronounced. <laughs> All right, everyone. I'm Gwyneth. Welcome to the writers' meeting for Goop Labs. Hey, 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 hey. I did not Goop say Labs. you could speak. Okay. So, what are we thinking for this episode? And remember our motto: as, as much, much harm as possible. As possible? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just uh, uh, what about like handling uranium for acne? Ooh, I like that. Obviously, a lot of harm there. Right. Uh, what about practice divorces? Like, you get a divorce for, for, for practice. Mmm, spiritual harm. Love that. Love that. Outside the box. Uh, if, if I may. Yes? Why not just go with a classic? Ooh, the jade egg? Because we're going to get sued again. That's no, why. No, no, no really I, can't. I, I mean, a classic harm. I was thinking mediums. Ooh, oh, love it. just mm. so much harm there. That's excellent. Yeah. I, I, I mean, think about it. Mediums have been debunked time and time again, right? And yet they still bilk some of the most vulnerable people in the world out of their money. Okay, but doesn't like everyone know that's bullshit? I'm Gwyneth Paltrow and I know that's bullshit. No, but that's the best part. No, people with firmly rooted religious beliefs somehow think that Christ is the Lord and Savior and that an English teacher in Oklahoma City can talk to their grandma. It's really weird. I love it, but it's going to be hard to top. 
self-immolation? Drowning your babies. Eating your own poop. See, this is why I love you guys. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on what I guess is the opening of the show, but is so distinguishable from all the other parts of the show that I only know that because there was a very tempting skip intro option at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'll skip the whole fucking show if you oh. make this easy. That button pops up and it goes away too fast. I ended up watching the intro. It's the same exact intro in, the, yeah, in every episode like the one we did yeah. before. Well, I didn't watch the first one, so I, I had to watch it. Starts off with Gwyneth explaining that you know she realized that at some point in her career that being pretty made her good at thinking too, so she should start this company or something. <laughs> well, she says specifically that she realized that her calling is something else besides making out with Matt Damon. And yeah. I thought, well, the lesson of all this is that we'd have less bullshit being sold to women if only Matt Damon was better at making out. If he was a really good kisser, <laughs> she'd be like, oh, this is, this is a totally appropriate use of my time, uh, intellect and capabilities. I should just stick with this. Oh, but, God, no. I wish I was they, like, we could have been making out with Matt Damon instead of watching this fucking episode. This oh, so much better. two votes. Jesus. <laughs> All right. So and then we, we got like, this amazing line. I can't believe she says this right in the intro of her show. Right. She's sitting in her boardroom talking to all of her employees and talking about how it's all about self-optimization, like, you know, optimizing the amount of money that myself has. And then she says, <laughs> and I quote. <laughs> How do we milk the shit out of this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And to be honest, I thought milking the shit out of it was going to be saved for the Clonics episode. I'm surprised they used it. <laughs> in the shit. I that was, and it, there's an entire half an hour in there. Yeah, I was expecting that in the boob massage episode. <laughs> <laughs> also, she's like, stealing trying to pretend she's like a skeptic here and that bothered me because oh, God. she's saying like, you know, we all have just the one life. I'm a rationalist. Now, by this psychic vampire repellent that I literally <laughs> sell. smells like you my vagina, use, yeah. No, we don't get to use our stuff. <laughs> Whether or not that candle smells like your vagina, that part, my, that's like the truest thing on your site. Fuck off. <laughs> She's like, you know, she goes like, the advantage we have as a company, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, is the fact that if you wrap it in spiritualism, there's nothing that's illegal to say? Is that it? <laughs> is that the advantage? Yeah. It is. Well, in fact, th there'll be a disclaimer at the uh, the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but well, in the intro, we get a montage of like people having a bunch of needles in their face, a bunch of people eating mushrooms on the job, someone I think orgasming mysteriously. <laughs> oh, that was me. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair, fair. That wasn't that one wasn't very mysterious. But the thing is, all the clips that you see, you know, they're just there to distract you from what Gwyneth's actually saying over the top. And what she says is the opportunity we have with the Goop Lab is that as a company, we can go out in different groups and do a deep dive into topics, which is so banal. It's just so right. boring. <laughs> You're not saying anything. Right. The advantage we have is we can check things. <laughs> go places and do things. We are ambulatory and sapient. Right? That's that's the advantage we have here at the Goop Lab. <laughs> she also goes, at one point she says, we can ask the question, is this real? Do we feel better? And she presents those as if those are two ways of phrasing the same fucking question. Yes. And therein <laughs> lies the problem. <laughs> uh, one other question about this little intro scene. We watch a doctor show a, a woman how to look <laughs> at her vagina. Is that like a complicated thing? <laughs> like, can women not see their vagina? No, like with a, a mirror at least. And the this doctor seems to be like, I'm an expert. I invented this photon gun. It's a lamp. And if you <laughs> look at your vagina with this near it, it's you, it's a vagina. Well, you have so a vagina. I was assuming because we don't see the vagina, we just see that a woman is looking at her vagina. I was assuming there was a ping pong ball involved <laughs> or something like that. That there was a trick going on here. Well, you you've not seen the vagina episode in that case. That's Betty Dodson, a, an octogenarian sex therapist who's actually pretty cool. And, and that episode is not that bad. But the episode does end with one of the Goop staff wanking while Betty Dobson holds her stomach. Really? And it, it's, so the end of that show is like a minute and a half of this goop lady just going at it with a vibrator while being held by an octogenarian. So it's, it's um, worth watching for that. Uh, can we it's switch worth over? adding to your Let's collection switch. of videos of women wanking while being held by octogenarians. Let's just switch over to that episode now. Like, yeah, no, no, let's just do that minute do and a half. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we're opening the episode proper. We open on a bunch of 
her employees, I guess, walking around barefoot outside, communing with their stupidity. <laughs> the, the the first line in the episode itself, somebody goes, um, once you become aware of your own energy, and I'm like, okay, unless this sentence ends with a stage of development that we reach in infancy, right? Like, you know, you have the ability to open and close your hands. I'm calling bullshit on it. All right? Yeah. Jesus. Everybody's doing that, like, weird hand motiony thing. And like, as far as I can tell, somebody's saying like, okay, once you learn to hold the invisible pulsating watermelon, <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of my thought. Here's your bill. <laughs> oh, it's so like, there's so much nothing being said here. Okay. Here's the actual quote. I had to write this one down. Once you become aware of your energy and that everything around us is energy, you can start to do exercises and activities that help open you up energetically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And some of those uh, some of those exercises involve poking yourself in the forehead, which is what they're yep. all doing as they're standing in the garden <laughs> and then playing, playing what I thought was an imaginary accordion. That's what I thought the hand gesture was. <laughs> oh, that makes more sense. You're right. An invisible yep. accordion is way. Sorry. My thing is withdrawn. <laughs> Pulsating watermelon. What the hell are you thinking? This is no, why that was Marsh silly. That was silly. Fucking Stupid. professional. Right? No, accordion. Come on, skeptic okay. here. <laughs> Occam's razor. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> Occam's razor would say it's an accordion. Yeah, right. My <laughs> watermelons don't pulse. You'd have to explain yeah. that. Yes. So, she thinks she has an accordion. Why would I say pulsating watermelon? That's dumb. <laughs> and we're getting, I guess these are clips from later on the, in the show where we see like the psychic psychicking and she's saying stuff like, I, this is, I'm not making this example up. She says, was there something with a car? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And the response was like, that's fucking crazy. I'm oh weeping. Oh, my God. Burn I'm the weeping witch. now. Yeah, I, I have a car. A car. I have a, an automobile. I swear I to God. I was in a car this morning. Holy shit. Yeah, <gasps> what you didn't see was uh, in the clip before, she named something beginning with an A. Then there was uh, something beginning with a B. Both those missed. <laughs> car was next. She went through the entire alphabet, just noun by noun. And was there a dog? <laughs> Ah, but one time the guy, there was a xylophone. It was a terrible day for me. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's, of course, the lady going like, you know, I can't believe that, you know, they would declare that some people would have the audacity to declare all psychics fraudulent just because every single one who has ever subjected themselves to testing turned out to be one. Oh, but, yeah. that, was, that was one of the amazing, terrible cuts right there. Somebody's just like, all these ideas are being laughed at, being called fraudulent. Oh, my line's over. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I thought but we would explain also, that. On the laughing thing, they say uh, ideas are laughed at before oh, yes. they're accepted, which is another way of saying anything you think is ridiculous will one day be true. So, Eli, uh, one day you genuinely will be able to fuck away someone's Lyme disease. We can look forward <laughs> yep. to that in the future. <laughs> that day is It's today. just like heliocentrism. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea that she apparently honestly believes that every single correct thing was originally laughed at, right? Every incremental advance and says, hey, man, we determined the uh, the atomic weight of that new element. Everybody cracks the fuck up. You did not. <laughs> Circles aren't round, you a priori bitch. <laughs> what are you talking about? Also, like, don't fucking flatter yourself. This is not a new idea. This is like no. the single oldest wrong idea. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Jesus. And, and you know, I'm going to talk a little bit in this in the show about some of the sort of psychic techniques that I've kind of seen psychics employing. And I'm just going to mention the, there's one. The first one that we see is the psychic saying to everybody there, like, "Oh, you're psychic, you're intuitive, because we all are." Which is something psychics say to people in order to kind of get them on board. You know, if you kind of say mm -hmm. to people, "Oh, you've got magic powers as well," then you're more likely to be flattered into thinking you're special and therefore kind of agree that this magic power exists. And the best deployment of this I ever saw was uh, a psychic in uh, Liverpool, just in a, like, a mind body spirit festival. I have no idea who she was. She was incredible for the ways that she got out of things. And she tried this trick as part of an audience, picked out a lady, said she was talking to this lady's mum, and, and uh, the psychic says, right, and she's saying to me, love, she's saying, you're psychic, you are. And normally the person in the audience would always go like, oh, yeah, I am. Or if they don't, the psychic would say something like, well, you're not psychic, but you've got the potential to be, or you're very intuitive. Sometimes you know stuff. But this lady in the audience just went, no, I'm not psychic at all. And so the psychic, without missing a beat, said, no, love, she's talking to me. She's saying, I'm psychic. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, uh, her, your mom showed up to tell me how psychic I am. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> she, was, she was the greatest psychic I've ever seen for spinning a miss. 
Um, because at one <laughs> point in the reading, she talked about how um, somebody in the audience had, she could see that, you know, the, the person on the other side, they're showing me a, fr- a glass fruit bowl on a mantelpiece above a fire and there's an apple in it. And the person in the audience is like, that makes no sense to me. And any other psychic would just spin some of those details out. It's not a glass fruit bowl, but a ceramic one. It's not in the fireplace, it's on a table. It's not an apple, mm-hmm. it's a banana. This psychic right. didn't do this, didn't do that at all. She doubled down. She went, no, no, she's definitely showing me a glass fruit bowl on top of a mantelpiece with an apple in it. And actually, she's showing me now that there's a banana balanced on top of the apple. Sometimes even I don't know what they're trying to say. And then she moves on. It was just beautiful. <laughs> Good for her. Oh, fuck you all that the way double thinking. down. Three that words. Thinking. Okay, first word, two syllables. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting this. Also, like, can we can we take just a quick second to talk about the the people that work for Goof? <laughs> <laughs> um, I would describe them as everybody ever that I hate at the coffee shop. All of them, every yeah, single one. Yeah. I think if you asked a million people to describe what the staff of Goop look like, they'd describe every single one of these people to a 99% accuracy well, that, without yeah, watching it. Exactly, <laughs> that's like, it. If, if there was no sound or context and you just showed me this photo, I'd be like, oh my God, that looks like the staff at Goop. <laughs> <laughs> and like, who have we got here? We've got the, the guy wearing a turtleneck. We've got the guy in a denim shirt. We've got the guy in a blue blazer. That's one guy. That is one guy. <laughs> 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 also, the psychic cuts in here. She aims for a simile but misses, and she says something. This is an. Ex- I think this might be an exact quote. She says, "If we take a piece of paper, dead people are just on the other side of it." <laughs> Fuck! I did a metaphor. It's like <laughs> it's like <laughs> they're like. A- so, yeah. So what? W- w- she says literally, "If you take a piece of paper, dead people are on the other side." So, like, when you don't take a piece of paper, <laughs> they're just dead? Or they're they're ignoring you on the other side of the piece of paper right, until you exactly. take this woman's class? I think Seems she just odd. got really confused about what the obituary section in the newspaper actually is. <laughs> hey, look, if I look at the other side, all those people come back to life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's just flipping paper back and forth. Killed your parents. Killed your parents. They're back. <laughs> <laughs> so, and now I, I, I guess that was also part of the intro. I don't like now the show actually starts, right? We're sitting, we're on a couch. We've got Gwyneth and her assistant on one side, and we have our psychic on the other side, along with a PhD. We'll meet them in turn. But the opening question, I love this so goddamn much is what's the difference between mediums and psychics? <laughs> Right. And I immediately wrote, ooh, ooh, I know this one. Mediums lie about the present. Psychics lie about the future. But that's not correct. Apparently, yeah, that was yeah. not a correct answer. I love that the psychic slash mediums answer was I'm both. Yep. The, the answer to the question, what's the difference, was I do both, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. I can yeah. read your mind. Also, if you take a piece of paper, I'm a necromancer. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is this is. Laura Lynn Jackson. She is a psychic medium, a teacher, and an author. Uh, none of those are legally protected terms, so sure. <laughs> me too. Right? Uh, I googled her, by the way. Fun fact. She used to look like Ivanka Trump. Now she looks like if Ivanka Trump settled like a tar drop experiment. So that's a fun thing. <laughs> so, uh... Now, Marsh, were you familiar with Laura Lynn's work? No, I've not heard of her at all, which is weird because later in the show, she is described as the, like one of the world's best mediums. But I had mm-hmm. never heard of this person in the slightest. She is as good as any other medium in the world. Yep. She is the high best. for best. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, OK, she explains, though, that being a medium means that she can read energy. Now, th- so she's two fucking levels removed from meaning. Read some nonspecific <laughs> thing energy some non-specific thing right so and, and did you guys get the sense that i did that when she's talking and we keep cutting to gwyneth paltrow gwyneth is not buying this remotely even when she's sort of saying oh this is going to be a good one and oh this seems really exciting it looks like she does not believe this in the slightest she's got a smirk on her face i think yeah we've hit the bottom of of the barrel of what gwyneth paltrow is willing to say she believes in in the name of goop i think we've found the limits of her credularity 
<laughs> yeah, I still think they're going to make a season two and a season three of this. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, because she'll still sit there and make money off of this, but she can't summon the ability yeah. to pretend that she believes it. She's and not that good an professional actress. fucking actor. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> she will smirk, though, so that's, you know, ethical now. Great. Yeah. And, and the thing yeah. is, her uh, her colleague Elise, who, who seems to be like the, the, the proper driving force behind the, uh, the, all of the episodes in the show when you, when you kind of watch them all, she says that, you know, Laura's probed both of our worlds on the other side, implying that Laura's done a reading for both her and Gwyneth Paltrow, which is weird because we never see her do a reading for Gwyneth Paltrow. And if that was a good reading, we absolutely would have seen it mm -hmm. and we don't ever see it. So that just slips by like it never happened. <laughs> well, yeah, and Elise too. Yeah, we really never mentioned that one. We see a couple of others. Also, I want to point out Laura Lynn says that she can talk to dead people, which is great because at some point in this fucking episode, I'm probably going to die from the apoplectic rage that she causes. And I can still tell her to go fuck herself then, uh, which is nice. We also meet. So sitting uh, alongside Laura Lynn is Julie. I'm going to go guess by Bish, Yeah, Bishel? it's Julie Bishel. Yeah, Bishel. yeah. Now that okay. that is a name I did know. Um, so because I, I she used to be someone who was regularly talked about on Skeptical, uh, a, a podcast uh, hosted by Alex Sakiris. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Skeptical. Uh, it was mm -mm. quite it was prominent for a, for a, for a while. I think it's still going. Loads of skeptics would be uh, in, invited on to do an interview. You know, fairly leading skeptics and sort of parapsychology. Uh, well, uh, an anomalistic psychologists and you know skeptics about the paranormal and things like that. And John Ronson was going on there and things. But they all assumed that because the show was called Skeptical, it was a skeptical podcast. And uh -huh. it absolutely was not. And Alex Kiris is just a big <laughs> believer in all of this kind of life after death stuff. And Julie Beichel is basically the, the, the go-to example he has for well, well conducted science about the paranormal. So it was a bit retro really? hearing a name and actually meeting Julie Beichel there on this show. Oh, wow. Like, okay. So yeah, quick she reminder. She was a good example. Of yeah, science? yeah, yeah. She's she is the example that when I interviewed uh, uh, Alex Akiris, he repeatedly brought up the work that Julie Beichel was doing as evidence that we skeptics aren't listening to the real quality science that's uh, that's being done. Okay, is is her first line in this show not? There's a lot of anecdotal evidence that I'm not a fraud. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, yeah. and then there's a long pause while even Gwyneth Paltrow is like. Oh, do you think that's good? Do you know what anecdotal is? <laughs> well, th this is the thing. So Julie, you know, it, it has got a PhD. I, I, I can't remember what field her PhD is. It's not in the same, not in the, the It's the same uh, pharmacology. pharmacology. Yes, pharmacology. And toxology. Yes. Yep. Important background. With a minor in microbiology and immunology from oh, the well, University of Arizona. So she's ready for psychic shit for sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just quick reminder. Phoenix. PhD is a product that you can buy you know that you, yeah. they, they sell you that if you pay for it long enough you get one of those <laughs> I feel like it's, it stands for phoenix doctor that's phoenix doctor. <laughs> she said arizona it's misleading Wait, i feel like it's phoenix but, but her best line though is after she says that bullshit line that he mentioned she says and i quote there's tens if not hundreds <laughs> if not thousands this is my if not millions of people in the u.s <laughs> that have had at least at least who have had these experiences at least she's narrowed it down to five orders of magnitude yeah, for us and then put an at least after that. quite a range i mean like there are zero tens and zero hundreds and zero, thousands, <laughs> zero millions of Americans. like you can, that's technically true and oh the sad thing about julie is she explains how she got into this and it was her mum died. She went to a medium. She got convinced that it was true. And then she went to her colleagues who were oh, sort of fellow scientists saying, hey, this is amazing. And they went, no, you just tricked. You were duped. And she said yeah. to them, I didn't get tricked. I'm a good scientist. And I was there. And that's how she got into this whole thing is I'm a scientist. Therefore, I am too smart and educated to be fooled by a very well conducted, very well studied set of psychological tricks that works on lots of people, especially if you don't know that they're tricks. And Especially if you in, think yeah. you're too smart to get fooled. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. And if you've got a massive emotional bias towards believing it because your mom just died. Come yep. on, Julie. Yeah. Yeah. But yes. So she cites potentially millions of experiences at least and, you know, doesn't seem to be convinced that, you know, like the fact that not a single one of them has been satisfactorily documented would maybe be a, a, a problem with her assertion here. 
but she's the expert. She's going to be their their fucking scientific expert throughout the episode. Yeah, even though she just introduced that there's a lot of anecdotal evidence seems to be what she's going on. And I kind of wrote my notes, oh, we get to bring anecdotal evidence because I've got a lot of anecdotal <laughs> <about> readings. <laughs> I've seen about how well mediumship helps with grief. I, I've seen the psychic Joel Power saying to a lady in the audience who talked about her son's suicide and she said he how he her son uh, jumped out of a window, I think it was. And Joel paused for a while and said, he's telling me he didn't jump. He's telling me he was pushed. Oh, God. <laughs> there is wow. that kind of anecdotal evidence about helping people deal with grief. Oh, cool. Are you counting that, Julie? Christ. Jesus. Marcia's heard tens, if not quadrillions, of anecdotes. <laughs> <laughs> and who pushed her? Hillary Clinton. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's not not even the worst one. I won't go through the worst stories because this is ostensibly a comedy show. But there is some grim stuff out there. Wow. Wow. All right. So now we're going to see Laura Lynn, the psychic, in action. She's going to do a rating for Caitlin, uh, who is Goop's food editor and undoubtedly the best one. Right. Like they did 12 of these. This was the best one that she she got. So this is the one that we're seeing. Right. Yes. Yeah. We also get the little preface screen here where it's like, our producers didn't tell her anything and their card was a totally free choice. (laughs) (laughs) This is perhaps the most delicious part of the episode because one, it's not true. And two, you're just allowed to lie about that stuff. Like, I'm not going to name any names, but I have a friend who's a fairly well-known magician who constantly does that, and it's just a lie. They right, be, right. Yeah, yeah, comes- yeah, exactly. <laughs> so- we, we have never met before, have we? No. Yeah. yeah, there we go. I promise not to palm cards. I'm palming a card. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and then, okay, so keep in mind, consider what we're going into, right? So, first of all, this is one of 12, right? She She... Psychic reading to all the various members of the staff. This is the best one. Mm-hmm. Everyone she did a reading for was pre screened for both credulity and stupidity. They work for goop. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, despite that, what we get is shit like Laura going, I'm sensing that you have or have had a mother. <laughs> oh my God. Literally, like, hey, do you know any? females by any chance yeah. maybe your family has a female somewhere in it I do yes there's like so many it's like half it's about half and just as a per- this is a perfect example of how well uh, how heavily rather this has been edited because we introduce Caitlin Laura says one line to her we immediately cut to Caitlin already in tears yes. so it's like wow you were really affected by that opening uh, opening greeting Caitlin you were really moved by Laura saying hi to you there Oh, she goes, I'm getting an E-L or a, a sound with an L or an L name. I'm like, wow, look at all that specificity. <laughs> well, and let's just point this out here. She goes, I'm getting an E-L. Her name is Caitlin and her mom's name is Lori. Now, I'm no psychic, but we are still missing an E. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. It's you, Eli. God, she is good. Oh. She's really good. Oh. <laughs> She was actually reading this podcast the whole time. <laughs> and I want to talk about my favorite cold reading moment here where she says, I'm curing happy birthday. And then Caitlin goes, it's her birthday tomorrow, which means that Lori, her dead mom, is like, happy birthday to me. Send that through the ether of death. <laughs> well, that's OK. That's my favorite. That. Yeah. <laughs> That's my favorite aspect of this whole thing. If we buy this nonsense, which we don't, I mean, Eli could destroy this fucking lady in a cold reading contest. But if we buy this, we have to accept that this woman's dead mother crossed over from the other side, had this unique opportunity to talk to her fucking still living daughter and said, it's my birthday tomorrow. Also, you have some artwork <laughs> in, of mine in your home. Yeah. Yeah. Is that it? I, I, but- I also, I, lo- I love the question that Laura asks about the birthday thing as well, because she says, I'm hearing happy birthday. Is there a birthday coming up in the family? Like, what, <laughs> yes. ever? I mean, hopefully. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> not really ever. Like in the happen. next year, in the next 365 days, is there a birthday in the family? <laughs> I also loved how Laurie, like, at one point, <laughs> she like tried to help. There's like an awkward pause where the medium clearly got something wrong. Yep. And Laurie like starts to be like, did you say right? Because my mom is right hand. And the, the, the psychic is like, shut the fuck up. Don't help me. I got this. I got this. I will eventually edit this. It, if you say something, it'll look bad. I will oh, fix well, this. No, so you know what that was? Um, she says, like, don't feed the medium. But I yeah. think what she's doing there is um, she, says, she, she does a, a bit of a reading and Caitlin doesn't really react to it. 
And then she then and there's an awkward pause. Yeah. That after the, after there's been a bit of a pause, Caitlin then tries to fill that pause because it's awkward. And so what Laura's doing, and it, mediums do it fairly often, is kind of underline and underscore that awkward pause so you're even more aware of how awkward it is next time, and you yep. will fill it without yep. even thinking about it. Yep. So wow. it's kind of exactly. pushing you into that kind of pressure situation. So you will do it by by highlighting how awkward the silences actually are. Oh. It's really smart. And yeah, we get to see the next level of this when she starts beating up on the the girl who's not you know, pretending, not playing along. <laughs> oh, Anna's <laughs> like, oh, you want to play the awkward silence game? Let's fucking do this. Yeah, Staring right, right. It. But it's it's really, really hard to, to counter that because like we, I went to, to uh, I did some undercover filming uh, of a palm reader once and we sent a friend of mine with the, the camera that we had and we told my friend who's had lots of, like, lots of readings as a skeptic, she's done a lot of investigations, we said, all you need to do is just go, all you're allowed to do is say to the psychic, I only want to know about my current uh, situation because I need to prove to my friend this is true. So please don't tell me about anything about the future. And I'm not going to answer any questions because I need to prove to my friend that it's true. And so every time that the, 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 the psychic was asking a question, my friend would say, I, I, I need and I can only answer, I can, I can only sort of say yes or no. I can't say more than that. Could you be a bit more specific? And even though this person, uh, my friend had had loads of readings, she found it really impossible to live in that awkwardness of saying, could you be more specific when the psychic wasn't playing back? And she found herself, even though she knows, bull, knows it's bullshit, just playing along with giving her information just because of the social pressure. So it's really, really hard to counter. Wow. That. Yeah. Yeah, well, and we also get this amazing miss here too, right? Where she says like, you know, I I see two kids. Oh my and then God. like the person that she's re- reading for is like just blank in the face. She goes, in the future? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, those kids though? Oh my they're God. like sitting there watching her hook up with some guy on Tinder. Come on, mom, don't use a condom. Don't use a condom. <laughs> oh, God damn it. He had one in his wallet. Why? Who carries one in their wallet? That's presumptuous. Oh. <laughs> There's also a bit where um, her mum and her grandma, I think, who've come through, say to the psychic, apparently calling to Lynn, uh, to, to Laura Lynn, that they're really happy to be reunited. And I wanted to carry that on further and say, and they really want to be reunited with you, like, as soon as possible. Like, they've got ideas about methods and stuff. <laughs> Right. And what we're trying to establish here, because the, because the woman is crying and it's a very emotional experience here. And ultimately what we're trying to establish is that even if this is a lie, it's a good lie because look at how happy this woman is. Mm. Right. But in reality, it's spectacularly goddamn cruel. Laura knows exactly what she's doing. Right. Either that or she should be locked in a fucking padded room. One way or the other, she should be locked in a fucking padded room. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. But it's really just about how much we care about her padding levels. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're about to uh, hit level two of Laura's scam. That's where she sells her psychic abilities to you. But I'm going to need to take a few deep breaths first. So we're going to pause for a quick break. But on the other side, there's even more The Goop Lab. Yeah, there is. Hey, Frank. How you doing? Still dead, Steve. You? <laughs> also still dead. Uh, how, how's the service today? Nah, it's fucking lousy. Today, I can only get two words and a letter in. Two words and a letter? Get out of here. I know, I know. Oh, hello, gentlemen. Uh, every, everything all right? I, I mean, honestly, Marsh, no. Oh, what, what, what seems to be the problem? All right, so my niece is dating this guy who I really don't like, and I'm trying to tell her, but the communication you guys set up here in the afterlife, I, it's just fucking weird. Weird? I, how's it weird? I mean, if you want us to communicate with our loved ones. Which we very much do, yeah. Right, right. Why not just let us talk to them directly? Or, you know, through people who aren't constantly being proven to be frauds. Or that. This is typical. You all think it's just easy, don't you, right? I'd like to see you guys, right, design a system by which the dead can talk to the living that doesn't exactly resemble a bad magic trick and rely on the morally repugnant. I mean, how about like a a death telephone? Oh, shit, yeah, that's better, isn't it? Very much so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back, and now it's time for us to unlock our psychic powers. See, when we, when we last left off, Laura was explaining that, yes, she's psychic, but everybody's psychic. <laughs> you just have to go through her rigorous psychic training program. Yep. And her example of this is, you ever notice someone looking at you? That's psychic. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, these people work for Goop. They're very used to people looking at them. <laughs> <laughs> she actually says she's got a class of people out on their like Goop lawn or wherever. And she goes, so who's had a person behind you before? <laughs> Everyone. Wow. I am crushing it today. Oh, all right, guys. You're, you're just focusing on the misses here. She starts off by saying, and I quote, energy is real. So, like, let's compliment Sandwich. That is true. That is correct, Laura. <laughs> well done. And then everything she says is bullshit. <laughs> Okay, and, and we should point out that throughout this episode, we're sort of interspersing this with Laura doing her thing, doing her psychic thing, teaching her class, and also her on the couch with Gwyneth explaining all her psychic powers and how her psychic powers work, et cetera. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a brilliant bit in that where uh, Gwyneth asks Laura specifically, how does the information come to you? And she talks about how she sees it on like a screen and a mind and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it uh -huh. just reminded me that exact question is a, a question that a friend of mine asked at a Q&A with a psychic and specifically asked it because this psychic was Joel Power, who I've had many run-ins, uh, a, a Liverpool-based psychic. I've had many kind of uh, interesting experiences with Joel over the years. But my friend Emma went along to see Joel Shaw. And he, the first half of the show is him doing all of his readings. But for the first time in all the times we'd seen Joel, he seemed to be using tarot cards, which he'd never seemed to do before, which is a bit strange. But we couldn't, like Emma couldn't see that they were ta tarot cards because Joel's up on a stage and the table that he's got the cards apparently on is so high that from the audience, you can't see what's on top of the table. So he puts a box, quite a large box on top of the table, then takes out a deck of tar tarot cards. But what's strange, Emma told me, was that all the way through the readings, he wasn't looking at the audience. He was looking down at the table, but at the box and not where he put the cards. <laughs> and if he looked carefully, you'd see his hand moving up and down in the box and occasionally doing like a pinching motion as if he was zooming in on, oh my say, God. a screen that he had in there. <laughs> so that's, that's the first half. So it's like, your dad, pinch, 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 <laughs> died of a zoom in. Of the heart attack. It was, it was exactly that, basically, right? Your mother is buffering. Hold on. <laughs> so then it gets to the Q&A. And so Emma puts her hand up to ask a question. And she says, yeah, you're, you're looking down at the table a lot while you're doing the readings. Are you, like, seeing the information in front of you somehow? Or is it coming to you through <laughs> some other means? <laughs> And the microphone gets hurriedly whipped away from her and move on to the next question. <laughs> Ow, who tackled me? That was a <laughs> violent. That's okay. amazing. All right. So we're going we're gonna to meet a bunch of the different goop folks along the way here as they're going to test out their various psychic abilities. Yeah. We meet the head of their IT here, which means that what they do is they must just grab someone from IT for each episode and make them participate in the show. <laughs> yes. And I, I want to be in that meeting so, so badly. Uh, you wanted to see me, Mrs. Paltrow? Hey, Dave, come on in. I have some fantastic news for you. You stop putting claims on the Internet that I have to delete at 4 a.m. when I get a frantic call from hippie Andrew Torres? No, better. I want you, our IT guy, to be on the Goop Show. Um, hmm. No, thank you. Now, before you say no, you cannot say no. I can't. No, you can't. Okay. Um, could I at least maybe be on the drugs episode? I like drugs. I, I, I could probably think of some nice and, and also true things that I could say about about drugs. Mm, no, I'm afraid you can't be on the drugs episode, but since you love plants... Drugs? How about the episode we're calling Flower Power? Uh, what's it about? It's about the healing powers of shoving flowers up your butt. Okay, I really don't want to do that. I mean, I don't like a lot of people watch this thing. Oh, millions and millions. Yeah, right. See that like, I cannot emphasize how much this is not my job. Mm, I know. I know. Anyways, see you tomorrow at 5 a.m. when we start shooting. 5 a.m.? Yeah, TV is hell, but it's early hell. It has to, <laughs> has to go like that. What I like is, like, Laura's getting them to, like, play around, and she says that you all have to, like, direct energy, and I really wanted one of them to, like, actually throw a fireball at one point. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also meet the assistant editor of Goop as well, 
who's it's a name that I googled to try and find a pronunciation of this. I've not seen anybody in the world with this name, but I think it's like Misery or Misery, something like that. Sure. And I think she's she is the assistant editor of Goop. And I heard she's really loyal to the employer because I think uh, Misery loves the company. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal. See, uh, she she says that she doesn't believe in psychic powers, but she is interested in them. And I said she was psy curious. <laughs> that's my worst pun in case you all were wondering there's a great bit where like uh, Laura has them all sort of stand in a group and she says you know strike whatever pause you're compelled to to beam love to the person in the centre of a circle mm-hmm. you know he picks them out stand them in the centre of a circle and I really wanted Eli in that group so, you know, I could just imagine the, the medium like strike whatever pause you, you're compelled to, <laughs> you to to beam love it, to the person in the centre of the circle no nope. hey, not like that Eli hey, put your pants back pants on, on. Right, I yes. promise you that's not love and that does not count is beaming it. <laughs> All right. Well, agree to disagree. <laughs> well, I love it. So she's like, you know, everybody beam energy towards the person in the center. And apparently beaming energy is one of those things that you don't have to be told how to do. You're just mm-hmm. automatically as good or as bad at it as everyone else. Right. Yeah. yeah. The, and then the person at the center, uh, Laura says that the person at the center is just going to be the receiver. And yeah, I've seen those videos online as well. Yeah, right, right. Well, <laughs> Energy Bukaki, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so and our first Bukaki recipient is going to be the skeptic in the crowd. This is where we meet Anna. Right. And Anna's like, yeah, I don't really buy into all of this psychic stuff. And the psychic's like, oh, that's all right. I'm going to spend the entire rest of this episode bullying you. (laughs) (laughs) No worries. So she they step her into the middle and then everybody beams energy. And then we cut to Lauren. She's like, well, did you feel the receiving energy? And we cut back to the middle and it's a different fucking person in the middle. (laughs) We skipped uh, Anna's answer me. to that question. <laughs> How good would it be, though, if she looked down and she was like, I'm blonde, I'm blonde. <laughs> I love, she's basically, she's asking the people in the middle, did you experience any feelings or emotions in the last two minutes? Well, then QE fucking D, okay? <laughs> And also, by the way, they they go through this little montage where everybody explains what it was like to receive the energy. No one's descriptions are remotely similar to anyone else's. Yeah. Right? The the only thing similar is everybody is quite certain you beam energy like Gandalf. Everybody's doing Gandalf (laughs) beam motions. That's the only thread here. I loved (laughs) turtleneck, denim jacket, whatever, everything (laughs) fashion guy. He was like, yeah, so when I was in the middle, I felt something from above me. Also, I felt like I w- I'm pretty sure I was on a hilltop. So that Well, okay. You, were you guys on like higher hilltops? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you were? Nobody said. I feel like somebody started to say, yeah, no. Nope. Okay. Well, and <laughs> Misery or whatever her name is actually hits on it for just a second. She says, well, you know, it, it really felt good to be standing in the middle of the circle and have everyone paying attention to me. (laughs) Yep, that's it. That's it. That's the whole point of this exercise, right? And then we see Anna. We cut back to Anna in the middle, and she's going like, wow, you know, I feel guilty. It's super uncomfortable to be the only one not playing along with this. (laughs) Not playing pretend. (laughs) Right, and and Laura's like, oh, I'm going to lean the fuck into that. Right. She's like, no, it's OK for you to have no response. It's it, you, some people just don't have the empathy and, uh, you know, open <laughs> mind that's required for this. You know how, like, you have to really believe in physics for the airplane you're in to fly. It's like that. <laughs> some people want to be on the episode. Some people don't. It's fine. It's fine. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. Yes. All I ask is that you believe me anyway. <laughs> Okay, so it, now we're we're back. We cut back to the goop couch interview with uh, Gwyneth and her assistant and, and, and Laura and the Ph.D. lady and Pinface. Sorry, I, but she we see. I don't know her name. The assistant was here at the beginning with the. Oh, yeah, Elise, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Elise. OK, so Elise points out that every claim they're making is unproven. Yeah. Right. She's like, well, this is all unproven. I can't say it's proven false because that's not really a thing. So, you know, maybe the accurate way to say it would be 
Despite hundreds of years of fervent global attempts, no credible evidence that you're not a fraud has ever been documented, making the <laughs> likelihood of you not being a fucking liar approximately on par with winning the lottery every day for six goddamn years. But instead, she just uses the word unproven. Yeah, and I think, is, is it Gwyneth or Elise who says, well, can we prove anything? Yeah. So, yeah you, you can prove that you can convince some people you're psychic. I mean, we can, we can prove that. <laughs> Well, and then Michelle, she cuts in and she says, you know, you may have heard of double blind tests. Oh. All right. Well, I do a test that's two and a half times more accurate than those. <laughs> Even more blind. Mine is oh, a God, quintuple this test annoyed blind me so much. Test. The quintuple blind test. It's fucking because it's so clearly designed by me to bother Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking skeptic. I'll show you. I gave a baby at the hospital measles. Now it's an extra good blind <laughs> test to show you. So like, so this quintuple blind test, she says like, the, the, the medium doesn't know anything about the person other than their name. And the tester doesn't know anything other than their name. And then we do that twice and we give two people a set of results and they see which one's theirs. But this whole, apparently quintuple blind super strict test is done over the phone. It's an audio only system and it's a system mm -hmm. with only two readings done over the phone where you can't see what the other person's doing. And then I thought about it more and I said, well, this is even stupider because if you get two names, you've got a lot to work with with two names. Right. You know, if you give me the name Eli and the name Anna, I think I could give you a reading that Eli would recognize as being his if the Anna one wasn't his. You know, you right. get a lot of information right. in that. Yes, your balls will itch, for example. Right. Yeah. So, well, so, yeah, this is the test that she's created. And this is why I have no belief whatsoever that, that the fucking Julie Bichel PhD isn't also in on the fucking scam because this is her fucking test, right? It's, a, it's something that's got a better than 50-50 shot of a false positive yeah. plus it has a non-quantifiable measure for passing what right because the the way they determine it is when they hand you two fucking psychic readings and say which of one of these two is yours yes yeah that's it not not 10 right yeah that's exactly it because like it, it is it is the, the right way to do it is to give people readings to say identify yours but you don't do it with just two right so when i've done these tests in the past we have five sitters and we don't do it over the phone because we want to see what the psychic's doing and make sure they're not cheating in any way and so you so you have we had like the the sitter in a room behind a screen they couldn't say anything and then the psychic would come in and you know to to pass the test i think you either needed five out of five or even four out of five all able to identify themselves that's how you actually control it. And like in terms of actual controls beyond that, you, you say to the, all of the sitters, well, we need to pick sitters who are roughly the same demographic. So you can't just rely on doing a demographic mm -hmm. spread in your readings and hope that you get it right. But we also said to the readers, uh, to, to, the, to the sitters rather, don't wear any perfume. Because if you're on the other side of the screen and you're the only one who's got quite a strong scent on, then, this, then a psychic who wanted to cheat, to cheat could say, well, they've got expensive perfume. So I could say they care a lot about their appearance. They think it's really important to take time to present themselves well. And that would be just enough to tip it over the, over the edge. Right. Well, we'd redact out any references to background noises because if a, a police siren went past you in one of the readings, you might allude to that in some way in the reading in a way that uh, that can be highlighted. But you can do all that because you're in person. You're not over the fucking phone. <laughs> oh, right. it was ridiculous. I love also that you apparently went from double to quintuple and ruined her quintuple blind thing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and, and that's the thing is, right? Like, so she, what she did is she took an existing test protocol and dumbed it down to make it easier for the psychics to pass. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She didn't make this shit up. She literally took something psychics were doing and created a higher percentage of false positives. There is no goddamn way you did that by accident. No, I, I think she did. I genuinely think she does it by accident. I think she is a genuine believer. And I think it's that phenomena where you do a test of something you really believe in and the test says it doesn't work. So you find a different test and you eventually find a test that says it does work. And you go, there we go, we found the right test. I, I honestly think she probably believes it. But um, yeah, it's that ideological blindness. Yeah, I guess at a certain point, there's not that much difference between the two claims we're making. I'm getting, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm yeah. getting a letter P hacking. Some letter. <laughs> <laughs> Although, oh, it, to Noah's point, she does spend time answering a question none of us asked, which is, so the reason why we don't release the data is because it is <laughs> private. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's That's, private science. Yes, it would be yeah. like releasing so your medical data. Oh, no, we, we cannot release the transcripts, but they are perfect. I assure you the transcripts oh. are perfect. <laughs> yeah. you, they're under audit by the IRS. But right after that, we'll <laughs> get you that. And Gwyneth goes like, okay, now some people, there are some psychics out there that are I'm not going to say fraudulent because then how the fuck would I sleep at night? But let's just say not as good at it as you. Right. <laughs> we can we can admit that some people aren't really good at it. Hard cut. Yeah. yeah. And look, it's worth pointing out because the, the big argument that you see from believers in this, not practitioners in this is like, oh, you know, they're just crazy or they just believe it or something like that. But shut eyes, which is the con term for people who think that they're real. Don't charge money. <laughs> if you set up a credit card processing center for your psychic abilities, <laughs> you are aware you aren't really psychic. Yeah, yeah. And this, and they also, as you say, they take tests. The only tests I've ever ran were people that I think genuinely did believe it and were confused when they didn't pass the test, which is great because Julie Beichel has explained what she thinks is a quintuple blind, super strict, amazing protocol. And then Laura Lynn Jackson says, well, I'll do any research you want. And then mm. we cut to her not doing Julie Beichel's control <laughs> methodology, doing a test that we know is heavily biased and completely useless. Brilliant. Oh. Well, and then, okay. And the title card comes up, by the way, at this point to inform us, it says, and I quote, critics believe that psychics and mediums use dishonest techniques to give sitters accurate readings. And I'm like, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean fucking believe? It's not that <laughs> critics believe that. It's that critics have demonstrated it on live television. <laughs> Jesus. To which Laura responds, single combat right now. Let's go. Push up contest. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. I don't know. And then we cut. They don't do a, even a push up contest. Yeah, right. She's fucking uh, the PhD chick is like, you know, we can show that this is accurate. We're not going to, but we can. The important thing is that <laughs> theoretically we could show you. I'm not because you're because you're just because you're being mean now. Now I don't want to show you that. But we could. Why would why would Goop introduce cold and hot reading? That would be like me walking in and being like, hey, how's it going? I'm going to do some card magic for you. By the way, Mark Dex exists. All right, so let's just take a card. I'm going to stare very hard at the back of it. Don't worry about why. I'm going to do a quintuple heatless reading for you now. <laughs> All right, so now oh, this is the point in the in the episode where they explain the four Claire's to us. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> and by this. the way, the four Claire's are four different ways of perceiving. This is her her phrasing: perceiving intuitive information. <laughs> if all the four <laughs> Claire's aren't intuition, that word don't mean what you think it means. <laughs> I must admit, before she explained what the Claire's were, I assumed the four Claire's were just for the goop stuff that we hadn't met yet. So I thought it was very strange <laughs> that she was claiming to be looking to open the four Claire's up. It's all right. There's no way there's not like 19 Claire's on the goop staff. <laughs> yeah, and a bunch of Karens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is this where we get the uh, the drawing, the auras in crayon yep. as somehow? Yes. <laughs> yeah, proof we did of something? Sciencey stuff. Yeah. And class. She, she's just like, yeah, so, you know, I, I feel like you guys have questions. Here, I'll prove it. Dave drew Karen's aura in crayon. And as how you would can he see, even know he, what color it was? Well, well uh, exactly. Yeah. How would he? But he totally got it right. There you go. <laughs> and what? Oh, God. And what, what he says, this, this is Turtle Neck Guy. He says, her whole lower body was pink. And it's like, all right, keep that to yourself, you pervert. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then they also have this uh, another great, amazing fucking example that they give of how full of shit they are. They have the bit where everybody's trying in the class is trying to paint what's underneath the tinfoil. <laughs> oh, I love this so much. I love this so much. Because the other thing, like, she's got, like, a picture on the canvas. She's covered it in tinfoil. Well, if you want them to be psychic, don't use tinfoil. Tinfoil prevents psychic powers. Read a book. <laughs> You need oh, quite a lot of tinfoil so to really <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. like control you get that experiment. Five <laughs> these layers. Though what I love the most about this is that like she's like, yeah, I told everybody to try to paint what was under the tinfoil. And everybody's like, wow, that's impossible. I can't do it. And then they do the unveiling, right? She unveils the tinfoil. Mm. It's a bunch of pyramids. And they <laughs> don't show us what everyone drew. No. They do not know. <laughs> now, I, I want to point out, and this is one that I'm sure Eli knows and probably Marsh knows as well. The, the picture was three pyramids, right? 
that you go with a simple geometric picture there because if mm-hmm. you draw a shoe, it's super fucking obvious that no one else drew a shoe. But if you do something like triangle, there are so many possible things someone could draw that you'd be like, oh, I was getting the triangle, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was pyramids with a sunset in the background as well. So yep. if anybody drew the sun, that also counted. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and yeah. a tree in the foreground. <laughs> so it was literally <laughs> the most <laughs> common psych forces. I expected like a car and a cow and a dog and then a flower <laughs> that's a rose. <laughs> The number seven and the yeah, ace like, of spades. Yeah, like, just the letter F. You know, the yeah, alphabet. Okay, people true things that start with an F. Is that the yes. alphabet and all the numbers? Is that a Ouija board? It's a Ouija board. Wow. <laughs> and I, I love, we get a little more of Anna's skepticism here. Because Anna asks this such a great question that I totally believe was from an honest place, right? Because Anna has obviously spent the day with people being like, look, I'm making the feather float with my mind. And her being like, mine's not working. So she, <laughs> she asks her, she's like, okay, but like, Maybe some people aren't psychic. And Laura Lynn is like, no, everyone's fucking psychic. And Anna's like, okay, but what about deaf people? Deaf people can't hear. Maybe I'm just psychic deaf. Please let me go home. (laughs) (laughs) No, I have to bully you more. Yeah, Anna asked the psychic, uh, is it possible not to have this? And the psychic basically says, well, I mean, it's possible to be a stupid bitch, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, Uh, right. Is anyone else here a stupid bitch? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And by the way, eventually they get around to telling us the four Claire's here, (laughs) which I'm going to I'm going to list them, but only because I want you to understand how bad they were at coming up with Claire's. All right. So the first one is clairvoyance. That's the gimme, right? That's seeing images. Mm -hmm. Now, also clairaudience. Yeah. No, but that's hearing voices. Clear sentience, which is recognizing feelings. And boy, did they give up on this one. Clear cognizance, <laughs> which is just, just knowing shit. Just yeah, shit yeah. you just know. But like, aren't those other three Claire's subsets of Claire? That's, that's what I mean. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. These are such shitty Claire's. We would make such better Claire's, Marsh, if it was up to us to come up with the four fucking Claire's. Our Claire's would be goddamn awesome. I, re- uh, I really wanted like a Claire, like a Claire Nosmia kind of thing of like, you, they can smell from the other side. They can smell their people. <laughs> yeah, and Claire tasting. How do they not just use all the... F- they skipped a couple senses? Yeah. Yeah, right. I want Claire proprioception or something. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and and by the way, she's explaining to them how to be psychic. Now, this is amazing because you come across this advice so often if you read the books on how to do tarot readings or how to do, you, you know, not the not the how to do a cold reading, how to do a hot reading magic books, but the bullshit magic with a K books. You come across this advice constantly, which is just fake it over and over again, and sometimes it'll work, right? Just pretend that you're psychic every time you try to be psychic, and once in a while it'll work. That's the actual (laughs) advice that they give right here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. She says you can start off with like a one and with time and practice, you can stop being such an Anna and become a (laughs) ten. Yeah. The best magic trick in the world works one out of 52 times, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I think we all need to send Anna notes of solidarity or something. So we're going to pause for one more quick break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will one of the Goop staff members accidentally prove that just random guessing matches Laura's hit rate? Will Laura use that evidence that she's a fraud as proof that she has magic powers? Why the fuck didn't we join the dark side? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the prestige of the Goop Lab. Could have sold a candle that smells like my dick. (laughs) So better funded than us. So better funded. I work for a charity. Hi, we're the four Claires. I'm Claire Lee Chenault, uh, the least fortunately named Claire. I led the Flying Tigers in World War II back when this could still be a man's name, kinda. And I'm Claire McCaskill, the only Democratic senator from Missouri. Remember me? I was I was actually kind of kick-ass, no? I'm Claire Danes. You know my name, but where from? Go on, try to make a mental picture. Can't do it. Homeland. I'm from Homeland. There you go. Now you got me. And of course, I'm the most famous Claire of all. The jewelry place at the mall where your sister got an ear infection because a teenager pierced her ear with a pricing gun. The four Claires. Now you're psychic. Or some shit. Let me get a Cinnabon. (laughs) 
And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open back up on the couch interview where, where Gwenny, who clearly knows her audience, asks Laura to assure everybody that the paranoid terrors they have about what their children just got into are not psychic premonitions. <laughs> this was dark. Yeah. This was really dark. When it's like, what? So what if uh, for a friend, I'm asking for a friend. What if uh, my friend gets a premonition that my kid, that my friend's kid is going to die? And yeah. Laura's like, oh shit, you, that's not in the script. Um, did any of your kids die? <laughs> then, no, <laughs> then you did it wrong. Well, I love her answer because she's clearly gotten that question before, right? And she says, no, no, no. So what I've noticed is that if it comes through with emotion, it's not genuine. It's not a, yeah. a genuine psychic thing. If it makes you afraid, you're just being paranoid. So is it then impossible to intuit shit that would scare you? Right? Yes. Like, what yes. if your kid's going to die then? <laughs> and hang on. Doesn't loads of it come through with emotion? Because, like, all of the people she's doing reading for keep crying and things. Like, there's lots of different emotions. <laughs> right. I, can't think, I can't think of an interaction with a dead relative that wouldn't bring up some emotion <laughs> in me. <laughs> Just completely placid, like, hey, yeah, ni n nice to hear from you again, Grandma. Yeah, it was rough at the end, wasn't it? Like, I can't imagine having that level of placidity. <laughs> Hey, Grandma, who was the actor who was in that? There it is. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Grandma, just to check, do you have a birthday coming up soon? I can never <laughs> <have that point. laughs> so, all right, and now we, we cut back to psychic class, and everybody is, what, what they're doing now is they're sharing objects that have some personal meaning with one another, and then the yeah. other person is trying to, like, psychically intuit what the picture means and all this stuff. We start off again beating up on Anna for not being psychic. <laughs> <laughs> A little note on psychometry, by the way, which is what this is called in the magic universe. And this is one of my favorite stories from Inside Magic. So there was this super famous mentalist who for years had this very famous psychometry routine that he could do. You could do it anywhere. And it required no electronics. And he finally published it a couple of years ago. And his answer was this scene. He was just like, I mean, look at the shit and just make guesses, man. People want you to be right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay. So we, we have the one person in the class that did well, right, um, after editing. And we're really going to drill down on this. So her coworker gave her a picture of a dog, and she's talking about this picture of this dog, right? And she's like, I, I, I get an M and I... I, I see a sisterly relationship and loss and all this other stuff, right? Yeah. And I love that. Like, it feels like a sisterly relationship. And I'm like, what? The dog was. Like, wait, are you, are you, was your sister a dog? God, that would be an amazing hit if you manage that. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is, like, it's really clear what she's trying to do because she's looking at this, like, painting of a dog and she's saying... It feels like this was something given to you, but it, it wasn't meant to be sentimental, but it became sentimental when you lost something. I don't know what it is that you might have lost. And she's clearly trying to edge at the dog's dead. She's very clearly got, I mean, it isn't that the dog's dead, but it's really clear she's gone for dead dog here. Well, she's so, aiming for dead dog. So here's yeah. what I thought. Here was my assumption is that these two work in the same fucking office, right? So yes. what it ultimately comes out down to is that this chick's brother recently died and, and this mm -hmm. picture was something that he gave her sister or something like that. So she, like, come on, like, wait, what are the odds that you wouldn't know that a person, like, in your, you know, whatever, 25 people who work at this company, that you wouldn't know that they just recently lost a sibling? She clearly thought it was the sister, not the brother. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When she was talking about a sisterly relationship, she's like, oh, fuck, it was your brother who died. That's very <laughs> clearly what's happening. So much so that they have to have this whole bit where like Dwee, the one she's doing the reading for, the one that gave her the picture of the dog is like, yeah, we work together. But like we've only been in two meetings together in the last month. And I, I love that as well, because I wanted her to carry on and say like. Although in fairness, one of those meetings was the time my brother gave me this picture. And the second meeting was when my brother died. So in fairness, yeah, yeah right. they, they Actually, now that I think about it. It's a real problem. <laughs> also, when she's doing her weird and like she, I think, is a shut eye. So she's not doing it super well. But when she's doing the weird shut eye moment, she's like, uh, it was like an avoidable death. And <laughs> when brothers die, it's avoidable. Like he, he walks out into traffic and just waits for a train to hit him. Okay, that one, that was avoidable. That one right there. 
Oh, and there's a great moment as well because she says like the M thing. Although what she says is, I keep getting something with an M. I keep hearing an M cut, come up, and then we cut heavily, so anything could have happened in that cut. And then she says, I don't know if it's a name or a city or something with an M. And then we find out that it's the dog, and the dog's name was Muffin. And when we find out the dog's name is Muffin, we cut to Mercery raising their eyebrow, and it's like, yeah, you're not allowed to judge what an acceptable M name is. You have you forfeited that <laughs> right when you went with the name Mercery. <laughs> Also, this is Kelly who did the reading, right? Who did the, Mm. like, looked at the dog picture. Mm -hmm. She's jabbing herself in the eye so hard trying to get tears during this segment. It's (laughs) so much fun. She finally gets, like, one little tear and they zoom in on it from 19 angles. It's the best. (laughs) And this, so Kelly was the one who earlier described herself as medium curious, which I guess she's trying to say means I'm, I'm like interested in psychic, but it just sounds like, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I'm medium curious. I'm like one step above intrigue, but not as far as like genuinely interested. <laughs> so yeah, and then we cut back to the couch interview here where Laura, you know, like takes umbrage at the fact that people, you know, say that psychics are all frauds because all the ones that have ever been tested turned out to be and She's also not offering to take any tests or prove it or anything, right? And again, everything that she says when she's sort of talking about how all this works, the way it's edited, it's so heavily edited, she sounds less real than Carrie Fisher did in the last Star Wars film. (laughs) It's more more of a cut and shut job than that. Maybe that's it. Maybe Laura is actually dead and they've reconstituted this episode from old footage. I love too. She basically says at a certain point, she's like, you know, look, if I wasn't me, I'd think I was full of shit too. I mean, obviously (laughs) there's no evidence. There's no reason for you to believe. And then they start saying stuff like, and they try to hide behind this again. This is where I diverge with Marsh and, and believe that uh, Julie Bichelle is is consciously full of shit Mm. in her claims because she starts talking about how like, you know, look, the only person that can judge the validity of a psychic reading is you, the person that, that the reading is for, because it might be a, 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 you know, a, a in joke or something like that. And therefore there's no way to like objectively measure this. Well, yes, the fuck there is, right? <laughs> because you can just have those people like, okay, here are the lists of claims that the psychic made. How many of those are correct? How many of those would be correct? By, like all of that, even if, even if for some fucking reason, her psychic abilities don't have the ability to like ask the goddamn ghost how they died, right? And verify <laughs> that or not. Right. Uh, then, like, then yes, it could fucking be measured. This is not an insurmountable problem. Oh, <laughs> I just I want to set them up with like fantasy psychic and have them do a whole season, and it's just like, oh, we all tied. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> we took we did a lot of we crunched a lot of stats. We all fucking tied. Crazy. <laughs> Again, this season, unbelievable. All right, so now wait, but now. It's time for Laura to face off against her arch nemesis, a person with the barest hint of skepticism. (laughs) And she opens this by being like, oh, I'm really excited to read for you. And let me just say, to Laura's credit, I have said that to the guy who spent the entire time in my magic show shouting out how I did all my tricks. So I really felt for Laura here to be like, oh, this will be fun. Oh, Oh. by the way, greatest magic trick ever incoming. Don't want to spoil it. Greatest magic trick ever. That is absolutely true. But we, for a second here, we see that like, all right, she's about to read Anna, the skeptic. And then we cut back to the couch with Gwyneth and uh, Elise. And Laura's like, yeah, so I read Anna mm, scrimmage, just to be clear. This doesn't <laughs> Well, and you can see her setting this up right away, right? It's like the way that like the fucking stage hypnotist talks about how only really creative people can be hypnotized, you know, or whatever. She, mm. Laura says, look, I understand why you doubt it. It sounds too good to be true, right? It's like, no, it's the fact that every time it's been tested, it failed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. But she's like, I know you don't want to believe that your family and everyone that you've ever loved is still alive and that you get to meet your long lost puppy when you die. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, what she's responding to there is Anna being like, yeah, you're like Santa Claus. Except you charge like thousands of dollars. (laughs) (laughs) And and Laura's like, I know, I am too good to be true. I know, it's true. Yeah, right, (laughs) right. Because Laura's point here is just because Santa sounds fake doesn't mean he isn't a full-grown adult with a driver's license. (laughs) Push-up contest. We're not doing that. (laughs) All right. So Laura gets into her reading. First strike. She says, this is amazing. 
are there twins in the family? And when that's a no, she goes, or maybe a Gemini birthday. <laughs> so so yeah. her first guess is someone in your family was born between May 21st and June 21st, or there were twins somewhere in your family, and it's a miss. Yeah, and she, she even on the Gemini thing, she even expands that because she says, is there a Gemini birthday? Is that June? So she's kind of trying to loop in all of June. Also, all right, the rest of June, yeah. Yeah, so you're taking in like one ninth of the year, basically, at this <laughs> exactly. point, and still manages exactly. to miss. And oh, you're still well carving done. out an exception if there were twins anywhere in the history of your family. I'm a, yeah. a Romulus and Remus, I think I'm related to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh also, dad. I'm getting a month with an E. Did you have, because that was an extra thing? Yeah. But for those keeping score at home, by the way, we've just proven beyond any reasonable doubt that this woman is not psychic, right? Like, that's a pretty big fucking category, and she missed. <laughs> or did we? Okay, and then she says, and this is a, an amazing miss here. She says, were there women in your mom's side of the family who died? <laughs> Ever? <laughs> Ever? <laughs> And the answer is still no, right? She's no. like, well, I don't, my mom, you know, my, my, her, her, her mom's still alive and she didn't have any sisters. There was even a, mo a moment where she's like, well, maybe your, maybe your mom's aunt, your grandma's sister. She's like, my grandma didn't have a sister. No, <laughs> we're immortal Amazons. We all are still alive in your face. <laughs> The, the way Anna narrows it down is just brutal because she's saying like, I'm getting like someone from, for Laura saying like, I'm getting someone from like a generation over. So it's like but your grandma's sister. And Anna's like, okay, so you mean like my grandma on my mother's side? Okay. And you mean someone who's passed? Okay. Well, no, not that then. Yeah, absolutely not that. No, that would be very specific. I can tell you it isn't, it isn't that. And Laura's just going, wow, it's so weird that all these ghosts that you've never met or heard of are showing up in your reading, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> or... Your girl really wants to mess with you. This is cool. This is cool. Yeah. At this point, it was a Scouse accent away from an episode of Be Reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, the, there was uh, the, the, the thing about the great aunt reminded me of a story, the, the last story of a psychic that I, uh, I saw in Liverpool. And it was amazing. The stick for this psychic was that they'd get the person up on stage with them and they'd have a couch and they'd have like a little sit down sort of gentle conversation and so she gets she finds someone in the audience that uh, she's connected with and this lady stands up and she needs help out of her seat and then she sort of totters over to the stage with her walking stick and she needs help up onto the stage and she totters her way onto the stage this kind of grey-haired lady who sits down and the psychic's first line to her is so why am I getting that on the other side there's a grandmother who's passed. <laughs> I don't know because uh, my grandmother's still alive and she's 127 right now. Like so An even really? older lady slowly just shuffles her way onto the stage. Oh, fuck. Okay, your grandmother, a sarcophagus opens, rises out of the sky. Ah. Oh, um, and is, is this where she goes goes hard on just a bunch of guesses in a row and they all don't work. <laughs> yes. Where she's yeah. just like, okay, I'm getting, you're really kind of, all right, fine, fine. I'm doing new stuff, new stuff. Donkeys. No. <laughs> Shrek. Shrek. Do you like Shrek? Really? No. Nope. Uh, oh, Mexico, no Mexico country. Mexico. It's a fucking great movie. No Mexico. <laughs> Nothing with Mexico. Hats. The color. Listen, bitch. Red. I know you own a fucking hat. Are you kidding uh, me? A <laughs> color. Any color. But even even on the trip to Mexico, like they're in like California right now, which is pretty close to Mexico yeah. anyway. But also, I, I talked about this on uh, on on Skeptics with K, one of my podcasts, and a listener pointed out that Anna is spelled A N A, which is specifically the Hispanic spelling of the yep. name uh, Anna. So they're pretty close to Mexico, and she's got a Hispanic name. It's the equivalent of doing a reading for Eli and saying, so has anyone in your family been to Israel at any point? Yeah. Has you to Israel anywhere in there? <laughs> oh, but, but, and, and of course, no, 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 right? And no matter what she says. But then here comes the save. <laughs> here comes the turn. It turns out that this whole time she was actually accidentally reading the plant that was just off camera. <laughs> And look, magician to magician, 
That's a fucking great trick. The dramatic structure's fantastic. So yeah. You deal with the skeptic problem. And also, you can hot read the shit out of a camera person, right? Because I'm sure the Goop Labs were like, no, science, don't talk to Anna, no Googling. But I'm sure she was allowed to sit there while she was getting mic'd up and was just like, so are you excited for your wedding? And fucking right. Cry McSad Cry was like, oh, yeah, my grandpa kept talking about donkeys before he died. And she was just like, I'm yep. going to write this down real quick. I know yeah. it's weird, yeah. but I'm going to write this down. <laughs> It's so fucking good, except here's the only problem. It's a great magic trick. It just disproves her shitty thing. Yeah. Right. If this was a magic special and she was like, how did we do it? I'd be like, ah, except the problem is the implication of this is that Anna's family hates her and didn't want to talk to her. (laughs) Was that? Anna is finally seeing a psychic. No, you tell that skeptical bitch. I do not want to talk to her. You want to just watch like a boring, mundane conversation with your dead relative and and Anna just being like, oh, hey, hey, (laughs) you want to order food or (laughs) cool? Your grandmother's telling me that the weather's been crazy lately. The weather, (laughs) yeah, totally. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Do Do you fly back through dimensions for this? (laughs) <laughs> I feel like wait until you have something. If you're gonna get it, just wait until you have like something significant, something impactful. Great. How's hell? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now we cut back to the couch. So our bullshit PhD can cap this all off. Whereas we, she, where this is where she says that science is only one way of knowing the, the correct way. <laughs> but she didn't, doesn't add. But yes, it's only one way. I want to know the other ways of knowing. <laughs> well, there's clairvoyance. Yeah, there's, there's clairvoyance. Yeah, there's a whole range of questions. There's, clair- there's also double science, quintuple science, <laughs> octuple science, <laughs> guessing. Sextuple science, no backsies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Laura goes at this point. She's like, look, I've been accused of horrible things. Hard cut. End of scene. <laughs> wait, what? Wait, hold oh, on. Yeah. Let's go back. To be fair, though, like she spent a lot of her life with people being like, I saw you inside the Daleks armor. So I get why she's. Yeah. Upset by that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a harsh thing. <laughs> also, is this where the Ph.D. lady complains that she can't get any grant money for her? Yes. bullshit? She's like, yeah, I, I asked for money to uh, fucking study the upside down from Stranger Things on the other side of the paper and I couldn't get shit. <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing about bullshit. It's underfunded, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it's definitely the point where the PhD lady does not in any way point out that all of what we're talking about was done with absolutely no controls. And if I was a good scientist who actually cared about the truth here, yep. I'd be pointing that out right now. But no, because it agreed with her. It's almost as if she's got some sort of ideological investment blinding her from criticizing things that are on her side. Yeah. Hmm. Well, and then fucking Caitlin shows up. Now, Caitlin was the one psychic, the person who we saw the psychic reading for early in the show, the one that did fairly well of the 12 or whatever. So Caitlin shows up to give us a Pascal's wager justification, right? Basically, she says, you know, maybe this is bullshit or maybe it's not, but there's certainly no harm in me feeling more connected to my mother. I'm like, well, unless Laura charges for these classes or anything. (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ. And then she gives like, there's a a bit where like Laura tries to wrap this up with her closing wisdom. It was just Deepak level bullshit words. I couldn't (laughs) even write it down. The fucking paperclip showed up and just kept erasing behind me like the goddamn (laughs) robot in Wally, you know? (laughs) But, and and then, and then we get this great little close where Gwen asks, who will be president? She turns to the psychic and she says, all right, well, who will be president in 2020? That's gonna be hard good. cut. End of episode. It's gonna be Donald Trump, you idiot. <laughs> doesn't the other one doesn't take office until 2021, but <laughs> could be Pence. But... <laughs> well, yeah, no, it could That's be. True. It depends on how the second impeachment goes. But yeah, but 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 like she asked that and they all chuckle, chuckle like the end of a fucking Scooby-Doo episode and quick <laughs> end the episode before anybody has to explain that. Oh, no, no, she can't predict verifiable oh, shit. It's the best. <laughs> Gwyneth asked, asked, yeah, who's going to be president of 2020? They pan over to Laura and she's like, right? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> what? Smoke bomb. <laughs> All right. So, you know what? I feel like we should 
all test out our psychic powers at the end of this episode. Gentlemen, I'll correct the fucking question. Who will be president in February of 2021? Vladimir. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, so he's going with same, same guy as we got now. <laughs> Timothy Ryan. <laughs> the only president to ever be elected with zero votes. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a trick question. I don't think you'll have a government in 2021. America's <laughs> not existing. Uh, yeah, that's no, a good I reject guess. the premise of that question. <laughs> yeah, no, at a certain point, fucking Putin's going to cross the Rubicon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, based on the information in this episode, it'll also be Marianne Williamson somehow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's going to do it for our review of the Goop Lab. Are you into it? But that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need the validations of strangers more. Uh, so, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Uh, I'm getting a G or, or a W. It's, it's definitely it's definitely a love story. Uh, no, actually, it's Jerusalem Countdown. Jerusalem Countdown. Exactly. Yeah, actually, I love it. Eli does spell that with a G and a W. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. He does. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 236 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist Citation Data, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law. This is a P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Brian Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work harder or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Eli, Noah, and Marsh went on to get jobs at Goop and eventually ruin season two of the Goop Lab in the best long con ever. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, we have to do that. Judy Beichel went on to improve her super scientific phone call test by not doing the phone call and just taking the psychic's word for it. <laughs> <laughs> I blinded myself. Sex tuple blind. <laughs> Lindsay's grandpa's ghost started fucking his ghost donkey more discreetly after that day. <laughs> <laughs> Eli stole Laura's magic trick and pitched it to every single magician he works for because it's the best revenge he can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Eli's way behind in my. Yeah, actually, can yeah. we try that again? It's not that I missed it. I just feel like I did my own count. <laughs> that would be. You don't feel it, like that's yeah. missing it? No, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, okay. He missed it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the signal got better. You got, you're not. Yeah, skeptics. you know, it could have been also, it could have been that. And you knew that was going to happen. It could have been. Science like, is one way of knowing things. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. This company's worth billions of dollars. It billions was, so uh, much yeah. more than oh. ours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why are we good? Why do we just say that? <laughs> <laughs> They're obviously lying. They're so obviously lying. Just let me use the phone. <laughs> What's this middle name? What letter does this middle name start with? Abuk. <laughs> Good damn, bro. I mean, I, I, I will be peppering this recording with some random things that I've seen psychics actually do. So I'm going to oh, hold good. some of those cards. <laughs> oh, there's they, so many of your fit. notes that got me so excited, Marsh, where you're like, oh, I'll share my anecdotal evidence. I'm like, oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.